Hi, I'm Roger Timer, one of the creators of Faith Legacy Series that equips parents to nurture faith in the home. So, welcome. Let's talk about why that is so important, spiritually parenting. Well, first of all, it was God's idea that the home should be the primary place for spiritual nurture, not just the church. Deuteronomy 6 says this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Now these commandments I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Now, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. It's vitally important that our homes are the place where faith is not just taught, but caught and passed from one generation to the next. But let me demonstrate with oranges. Let's say that these ten oranges represent all the believers that have come to faith in Christ or will come to faith. How many of these came to faith or will come to faith between the ages of 30 and older? One. How many between the ages of 15 and 30? Only one other. Which leaves us with eight out of every ten believers come to faith or will come to faith between the ages of birth and 14. That is the most receptive age group there is. This is the group that we ought be concentrating on. Not only are they the most receptive age group, but it's also the most strategic, like wet cement, ready to be shaped before they are hardened in their spiritual worldview. So how do we nurture faith in children? Of course we want to have good programs at church, but how do we bring it to the home? That is so influential. Now in the typical Christian church, what percent of parents are active or intentional in talking about God to their children? Less than one out of ten. And that's alarming. Sometimes I wonder why. I think, one, most people aren't asking for it. Two, pastors are so busy with everything else. And three, where do you begin? It's such a daunting task. I'd like to welcome you to the Faith Legacy series. And many of you are part of the implementation meeting right now that gathers the pastor, the Faith Legacy team leader, and the Faith Step facilitators so that you might in your congregation change the culture. That happens when you move that statistic from 10% of nurturing faith in the home to 30, 40, 50 percent when it becomes a shared value throughout your congregation and we've seen this happen. I believe honestly that it can happen for you. So now as part of your implementation meeting, let's get to know one another around this topic. Divide into groups of three or four, that way you have more time to talk and share with one another what your parents were like. Did your parents talk to you about God? What was that like? Talk about that now. Welcome back. Some of you watching this are part of an implementation meeting and we encourage you to print out an, each of your notebooks for all the various Faith Step facilitators. So if you take your notebook and turn to the section at the beginning, Getting Started, you'll find that there's an outline for this meeting. It says Implementation Meeting. And we're at that Legacy Point 1, What Content Should We Teach Parents? As you can tell, it's a very broad scope. And there's a second handout called the Scope and Sequence, which lets you get a feel for all the different topics throughout the lifespan of a family from birth to grades 12. So all of you together are part of a system that's designed to change the culture of the church by penetrating all age spans within the family. 
Now, throughout all of this content, there are two things that are consistent. One, we will always talk about parents be intentional. If they get that and nothing else, uh, there's going to be a vast improvement. But the second thing is to show them that they have formal activities like dinner prayers or devotions or good night prayers or conversations after dinner with a teen. Those things that are planned, but there's also informal activities when an occasion comes up where they just learn to start thinking of ways they talk about God or share their faith. Like in Deuteronomy 6, there were formal activities. Um, Post it on your doorposts or on the frames of your house. But then there's informal activities. Talk about it when you walk along the road and uh, when you lay down and, or, or get up. That's like an ambulance comes by and they get in the habit in the car to stop and pray for those people. Or, or maybe it's, you're with your daughter shopping for her first dress on her, her first prom dress and uh, you have a chance to comment that she's gorgeous because she's clothed like the bride of Christ and uh, can affirm her for her Christian character and Christ in her. So uh, this is the breadth of the content and the thread that runs through it being intentional and also using formal and informal activities. Thirdly, an important part of content, very important, is that parents learn best when they're with other parents. It's also the body of Christ ministering to one another, encouraging, supporting, and even holding one another accountable. Now the video format that we're offering is somewhat unique and different from most video formats. Rather than having a long video section and then maybe some discussion, we break up all the video sections into bite-sized pieces, maybe anywhere from 7 to 10, maybe 12 minutes, but then parents get together in groups of 3 or 4 and discuss. In preteen and teen years, the parents get together with their children and discuss. But even in those times of preteen or teen years, parents also have opportunity to connect with other parents. Parents need each other to encourage and say, what you're doing really matters, it's really important. And when you give them that chance, they will do that. It will be very winsome. So, why don't you talk about it now in your groups? Divide into groups of three or four and think about something you admired that another parent did that nurtured faith in their child. Let's do that now. Legacy point two. How do we motivate parents? Do you ever have a problem with motivation? Getting your exercise, staying fit? Well, it can be just as hard to find motivation spiritually, especially around the task of nurturing faith in the home. Let's begin the motivation challenge by identifying who it is that we want to reach. If we could reach anyone, it would be that one person who is really kind of lackadaisical, and it would be a guy. I think that we ought to target the guy because guys are typically very intimidated with this whole process. If we could reach lackadaisical Larry, who is intimidated by it, not too interested in it, well, then, if we got him, well, we could win the day. We could get almost anyone. So what would it take to win him? Well, first of all, he and everyone else needs to hear how important it is. Now, that comes from the pulpit, of course, but more than that, more than just the pastor saying it's important, the church needs to demonstrate it's important. And they do that when they have a blessing event. When the church gathers for a blessing event and you watch other families go up there with their child and you watch the parents lay their hands on their child and for a few seconds speak some words of blessing, um, well, 
it's very moving and it also doesn't look all that hard or complicated. Lackadaisical Larry probably gets a little rib from his wife or maybe his child that says, when's it my turn? Or why did we miss this? Communicate the importance, not just one person up front, but the entire church with a blessing event. Secondly, relationships keep us motivated. I don't know about you, but sometimes on my own, I have a hard time getting up early and hitting the track or the gym. But when I have someone waiting for me there, I'll be there. Well, I think the same thing is true spiritually. We need one another to stay motivated and accountable. And that's the power of being in those groups throughout the Faith Legacy series. But even more than that, there's a great invitation power that happens. When you're in the preteen and teen years, parents have a bit of angst. There's some concern about, can I uh, adequately connect with my teen or raise my teen or talk to them about certain important issues? And the issues that we're talking about then, oh, sex or dating or responsibility and driving and those things. For example, in the father-son retreat for fifth and sixth graders, dads have the opportunity to connect with their kids and talk about the important matters of sexuality and what it means to be a man actually a man of God. It's such a compelling topic and it's so difficult for a lot of dads to have this conversation that once this system is there and there's lots of other dads doing it, not only is it easy, but it's easy to invite friends and it becomes an outreach tool as well. Now, many of you are Faith Step facilitators, so you'll be hosting one of these Faith Steps. It is powerful when you personally invite, phone, ask, would you please join this group? That's motivational. And when people get there and they connect with one another and they say, I'll see you again next week if it's a three session time or um, maybe you just connect with your parents of teens for that one night, it's very motivating to follow through with action after the event. So, Stay motivated in relationships. Now, number three, time is the trading commodity of today's family. So, if we're going to motivate lackadaisical Larry, we better understand manageable time commitments. How much time will he give us? We have discovered that from birth to age eight, those groups, most parents will give you three sessions uh, without too much pushback. But when you get to the teen years, it's very difficult to get three sessions because the schedules are uh, all over the map. But you can get a one-night seminar or perhaps a retreat for fifth, sixth grade. So let's talk about the issue of time in your implementation meeting materials, which are in your notebook, take out the sample calendar and the proposed calendar. And then as an entire team, discuss what are the best times for you to have your faith step. Now, notice that it spans perhaps the entire year or school year with a faith step every month. Pick out what best works for you. And as you do so, think about how it might be motivating for not only you, but also other parents to attend. Uh, let's discuss that now. Welcome back. Legacy point three. I'm busy enough. How about an easy delivery system? By that, I mean, it is a huge job to change the culture of your church so that most of the families are active in spiritual parenting in the home. And if the church professionals try to do it all yourself, you would exhaust yourself. The Faith Legacy series is designed to develop not experts in the congregation, but advocates. Faith Step Facilitators, that's what you are, is 
an advocate. You do not need to be an expert at all there is to know about spiritual parenting. Instead, you let the DVD lead the topic and also lead the discussion. And Faith Step Facilitators, that's what you are, an advocate, one who's passionate about this cause, and that brings motivation to lots of people for that. Since it's DVD delivered, all we need do is pass the DVDs along and let the Faith Step Facilitators facilitate the group. The group size, by the way, could be 50 or uh, it could be 8 in either setting. At the points of discussion, you would break into groups of three or four. That makes it easy. DVDs make it easy, but also the printed materials. We suggest at the very beginning that you print out a notebook for all the Faith Step facilitators. These notebooks are divided into categories like getting started, the facilitator materials including publicity, insights into leading any of the sessions, uh, the handout sections for birth through age 8, session 1, 2, and 3, and then at the back, make your own list for family contacts. A second way that we make it easy is that we give ways for the Faith Step facilitator to personally invite people into the experience. Uh, we offer publicity materials that can help with emails or phone contacts, but the best way is the personal contact. In your notebook, you'll find a job description for the Faith Step Facilitator, and now would be a good time to get that out and check it over. For you that are Faith Step Facilitators, see if that doesn't fit you. What makes this successful is that there are so many people throughout the congregation inviting and encouraging people to be part of one of the most important things a parent could ever do, and that's nurture faith in their children. It's important if you are in the preteen or teenage years to not have a faith step facilitator who is also participating in that age group. That's because they need to be with their child, and it doesn't do justice for their child if they're also trying to lead the event. What we find that works very well is those parents who participated in the year before are perfect for helping to lead it the next year because they show excitement about it. As well, it's helpful to gather stories of uh, life change and excitement testimonies, if you will, and keep those recorded because they're great ways to paint the picture for others when you invite them into the Faith Legacy series. The third thing that we would like to offer is blessing objects that are convenient and easy to get a hold of. In your materials, you'll find order forms and Faith Step facilitators, it'll be your job to uh, order and collect money so that the objects are there before the blessing event. We try to make that not only easy, but extremely affordable. Those objects, along with the blessing event, are a wonderful culmination to your experience as a group. But you don't have to let it end there. After your group is finished, it's a wonderful opportunity to invite them to join another small group or a become a small group that is ongoing if they're not part of one. Let the ministry continue after those relationships have been developed. We want to make it easy for you. More importantly, we want to make it a ministry impact that changes the culture of your church. Organizing. It's a challenge. Sometimes when we face problems or challenges in the church, we've got to ask ourselves the question, is this primarily an organizational problem or is it a spiritual problem? What do you think about the challenge of equipping parents to spiritually nurture faith in the home? I think it's primarily a spiritual challenge. So let's not organize our spiritual problems or spiritualize our organizational problems.
Instead, let's give spiritual solutions to spiritual problems. A spiritual solution, in this case, is calling on the resource that God gives us, the resource of prayer. So, as you gather as a team, considering how you will implement Faith Legacy Series, please do this. Close with a time of prayer and stay in prayer so that you might be able to um, give a spiritual solution to a great spiritual challenge and find a great spiritual reward. God bless you as you do this for the sake of Christ and His Kingdom.